I, I thought mean, so. I thought he's been uh, the last, honestly, since he's left Boston, I, he's been reinventing himself every single market that he goes to, and he's been more than serviceable. You got to try to pick up pitches too, Ben. When you lose velocity and movement, um, and this is a guy who broke every one of my records when he was back with the Braves. Um, it, he was a just strikeout machine in his early days. And yep. then as you get older, you get smarter, more wily. He's 35 now. And you you realize, okay, I don't have to blow it by everybody. Sometimes I could just get a ground ball double play to get out of this jam or pop a guy up. But, you know, you, you, you're – we call it trickery, a little magic. And uh, this this certainly, like you said, has been a guy that has reinvented himself uh, many, many times over. And the thing is, you can trust him. You know he's going to put in the work, be prepared by the time you're asking him to, you know, grab a ball, come out and uh, pitch an inning or two. And that's the one thing that I, that I love about Kimbrell. This guy's a gamer. He's going to pitch whether his arm's falling off or not. And uh, in this day and age, these guys, they, they hang on at the end because there's just not that many trusted guys down there at the, the, in the bullpen. Where you, you pick up that phone, you know this guy's going to be bringing his A game. I saw that the Guardians won this MLB draft lottery. They yeah, had a first 2% pick, right? chance of winning the first overall pick. They end up lucking out, and they got it. I'm kind of happy for them. I somewhat root for the Guardians now. I don't know why. Uh, but th- this ragtag bunch might have a primo player here in about five years. Maybe. 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 I mean, it could be three years. I you mean, never we're rushing know. guys to the major leagues. But the thing is, you want to you want to be able to take the top five guys, the top ten guys, um, and and you know get them in your fold once again. Um, talent is so hard to find. Pitching is so hard to find. Yeah. I've done this for twenty years. One out of every three of the first hundred picks is going to be a pitcher. And you know when you're looking at that and and that statistic, um, you know you you want to try to hit a home run with that. And I'm not trying to be cute because it's baseball, but you want to make sure that this guy is healthy by the time he gets to the major leagues, is going to be consistently good for you in the major leagues, um, because you're going to spend eight, eight to ten million dollars on this first pick. Now that they slot you, and the first overall pick is going to make the most money, and then you know I think everybody underneath him makes like two hundred thousand dollars less all the way down. Um, you want to make sure that this is a pick that that is scouted properly. And, you know, he's going to fit in properly. But, listen, the Guardians always do their due diligence. They're like the Rays. Um, They've probably been following whatever five picks they've got in their head right now or ten picks on their board. Um, And the one thing I do like about Brian Cashman and a lot of these GMs, you can walk in their office, you know everybody that's on their radar. Whether they're looking to trade for free agents or trade uh, for players during, you know, that could possibly be a free agent after the year and things like that, the rental, all that kind of and, – and they've got boards everywhere and stuff like that. These people have thought through – whether they had the 10th pick, the 5th pick, or the 1st pick, they've already had their picks, you know, in their minds who's the top guys on their radar. In my mind, there is a special guy coming out next year in 2024. You probably remember him once I jog your memory a little bit back in June. Put your head in the College World Series. Florida's first baseman slash lefty, Joe Caglione. Yeah. That guy can not only rake, can not only hit bombs, but he can also pitch. They say Shohei Otani is a once-in-a-lifetime player, but I don't know, sir. This Jacques C might be taking uh, the mantle from him possibly in a, in a decade or so, but that could be a really, really tasty pick for the Guardians to get if they did land him. There's other kids, uh, first baseman Wake Forest, Nick Kurtz. Yeah, everybody's uh, talking about him. He'll probably J. J. The, Weatherholt the, from West Virginia. That kid hits. He's the infielder, right? Yep. He, Chase he Burns, pitcher from Wake Forest. Wake and Forest can be awesome. All these guys in the College World Series. Yeah, you know that's the one thing too. That that's the the best kind of. Um, place to document these guys and say like okay pitching to millions of people on tv right. packed house here right. in omaha this guy can handle his his deal here so that when when they're looking at guys they've been looking at the progression the same thing with all sports when since they were 12 15 18 20 how do they handle themselves on and off the field and so they they know they they probably have looked through their grades you know, who's got the best grades, who who had the best attendance records, things like, you know, who are the most dependable, you know, and good people, you know. And so there, there's so many things that are factoring into this. And every organization is different. The one thing I can say, let, let's go back to the Rockies 10 years ago. Rockies wanted wholesome, family-type guys. 
and they and they drafted particular players that were based on a lot of their values, and and it worked out for them. And then all of a sudden, you know, you 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 get a dry spell, and not everybody that's a good Christian guy and, and a good family man and all this other stuff that they, they you know doesn't make the best baseball players. Um, so uh, occasionally, you you have to go outside the box. Then you see the guys that are international. Uh, you know, uh, guys that love to go to Japan, love to go to Dominican, Venezuela, and draft a lot of these guys or, or get these, uh, you know, unrestricted free agents and, and things like that. And that's how they do their stuff. And if you look at a lot of these Texas. teams, Texas Rangers, Texas. World Cincinnati Champs. Reds, Cincinnati yeah. Reds have, have had a lot of uh, Latin American players over the years. And because they, they that's their particular, I remember this is maybe 10 years ago, the, the general manager of the Pirates said, we're not going to draft anybody pitching wise under six feet tall anymore because they had a history of a lot of these guys didn't pan out. I remember when I was drafted, I'm, I'm honestly, I, I go to Billings, Montana in, in 83, 1983. And I'm one of the shortest pitchers there at 6'4". Every kid was 6'6", 6'7". Uh, you know, Pete Grimm, all these other kids out of college. And I was like, holy crap. Great name. Oh, yeah. Grimm. So, and <laughs> all right. So then a couple years later, too, Jeff Montgomery was the shortest guy drafted that year. Now, Monty was a hell of a pitcher. But there were certain people in the organization that didn't like him because he was right around six foot tall. Yeah. Within a couple of years, I think it was probably about 87, 88, we trade Jeff Montgomery to get Danny Jackson. And Monty went on to get 300 saves with the Royals. So, that, that again, just, just looking at a guy, you know, the eyeball test, sometimes, you know, you can fail at, at who you keep and who you let go. And that, that's a big part about uh, trading prospects now and, and losing guys Rule 5. That's shocking to me that the Yankees lost three pitchers Rule 5. Shocking to me right now. I'm still trying to get over that. Top two were picked. Welcome to the Oakland A's, Mr. Spencer. <laughs> hey, it's kind of like the transfer portal now in college football, man. You, you got, you've got to know quickly to try to get in there and negotiate with these guys to get them to come to your school. Well, fortunately, I'd rather be in the transfer portal because it would be my decision. Poor old Spencer's got to deal with the Yankees being stupid, and now he's an A. He didn't ask for that. If it was on his terms, he would have transferred to the Dodgers. I'll have to check that. I, I know that, that sometimes when they clear waivers, it goes to the lowest level team, like the most losses and stuff, and in your league, they get first dibs on you. The A's could use it. I, yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, and so what I'm saying is I like that. I like that. Yeah. If I'm the A's or – uh, I don't know who was particularly awful. Rockies last year. are up there. Rockies are right there. I can give it to you. All um, right, the, the A's got the first Pirates, pick. Royals, Rockies, Royals. White Sox. Your national friends, Nationals. dirty so the, Cardinals. They, were in there. they should get first dibs on some of these better prospects. Cardinals, no. Cardinals have been so successful in the last 20, 30 years. They shouldn't be getting nice Rule Five drafts. No. Don't want to see that. They did. All right. So uh, we're going to talk to Bob Joyce. We're going to try. Let's see if he's at court side. Try and hook up Bob Joyce here. Talk some UConn women's basketball. If not, I know Ben's been trying to get this jabroni poll going from uh, within the staff here. Yeah. And people to talk about college football and the playoff, who we would like to be in this college football playoff. We'll be right back on the Rob Dibble Show with Ben Darnell in your afternoon drive. Thanks for keeping us on the air.